I'm about to give you the no code unlock. I'm gonna show you how to use APIs and it's gonna open up an entire world of no code to you. Check it out. So in Rapid API, the first thing you need to do is search for an API. Once you've found an API you want to use, you're going to have to subscribe to it in order to use it. Most of the APIs on here have a free tier. You just simply click subscribe and then all the documentation is gonna be under the endpoints tab. Now, before we get into all of that, the first thing I need to show you is in make.com, you're going to use the HTTP module. 99% of the time, it's gonna be a make a request. In here, you'll need the URL, which you'll get from the API documentation. 99% of the time, the method will either be get or post. 99% of the time, the headers will include your API key and the rapid API host URL. Sometimes they'll put the API key in the URL itself. Don't be confused if that happens, but most of the time it'll go in the headers. If it's a get request, most of the time you don't change anything else. Always parse response though. If it's a post request, you're gonna have to copy and paste some JSON, but I'll show you how to do that too. Now back to the API documentation over here on the left, we have the API endpoints. This is all the stuff you can do with the API. We'll start with a get response. Looking at languages, if you click on it, all the information you need will be right here. You just look under HTTP because that's what we're using. It says right here, it's going to be a get request. The one thing I don't like about the HTTP code snippet is it doesn't give you a full URL to copy and paste. So actually I look at libcurl usually. I can take this URL right here, copy it, put it right here. Again, that's a get response. Now we need the headers. Here's the API key. Got to put that under the name and then the actual API key goes underneath that. Can copy it from right over here. And then we need to add one more header for the host URL. All right, we have the URL, API key, host URL. Nothing else needs to change. Parse response is yes. Okay. Right click and we can run this module only and it'll show you what it can get. Down here under data, you'll see the response. Here are all the languages that you can translate into. Now let me show you what that means in a scenario. That means that you can pull any of that data as a variable to use in a new module. Now let's look at post responses. Under translate, that's a post response. It's a completely different URL. And as you'll see, it has some required fields inside of it. Well, if we go here in the middle tier, the required field is the language you want to translate to in this particular example. So let's say I want to translate to German. That's going to be DE. If I put that right here, it changes the URL to what I need it to be. So I'm going to put that URL right there, change this to post. The headers remain the same, except we need to add one for content type, content type application JSON. I'm going to change this back to HTTP now. All right. Now we need to put the text that we want translated. That's the JSON. Just copy it and bring it over to the module here. We put the body type as raw and then the content type is JSON. And then under the request content, we paste that. You don't have to know JSON. All you have to do is change the stuff inside of the double quotes. So here it says, I would really like to drive your car around the block a few times. That is what it would translate. If you want it to translate something else though, you can simply delete this and put a variable from a previous module in here or type whatever you want. Here I've changed the text to translating is fun when using APIs. We ran that module and here's what we end up with, a translation for that text. Now I can take that translation and use it in future modules. And that is how you use APIs in make.com.